Shalom, Shalom to the elect of the nation of Israel, the elect of Yahweh Shai. All praises and glory is due to Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, Bashim Rakakwadash, for giving us this knowledge, this understanding, this truth, especially in the times we're living in, which is indeed a blessing. Now, uh, this video will be called Yahweh Shai Saw America and Kept His Integrity. The part in the title where it says and kept his integrity that's going to be in parentheses Yahweh Shai saw America and kept his integrity and indeed Yahweh Shai did see America in all its wicked splendid glory and the proof of that is when you go in the book of Matthew the fourth chapter now the point is really in the uh, eighth verse but we'll go a couple of verses above that. Now this goes back to when Satan was showing Yahweh Shai a vision of all the kingdoms of the world. From the kingdom that they were in at that time. At that time Yahweh Shai was seeing that vision that Satan was showing him. That was the Roman Empire. The Roman Kingdom. And uh, from that period of time, which is more than, what, 2,000 years ago, up until now, Yahweh Shai saw all those kingdoms. He saw a vision of all those kingdoms. So you best believe America was in there. America, like I said earlier, <laughs> America in all its wicked, splendid glory. Okay, so let's read it. This is the book of Matthew, the fourth chapter, the fifth verse. It says, Then the devil taketh him up into an holy city and set of him on a pinnacle of the temple and saith unto him if thou be if thou be the son of the heavenly father cast thyself down for it is written he shall give his angels charge concerning thee and in their hands they shall bear thee up least at any time thou dash thy foot against the stone and that shows you satan knows the scriptures too because Satan actually quoted scripture. Okay. I believe that uh, what he quoted goes back to the Psalms that was written by, um, you know, King David. I think it was Psalm 91 that he might have quoted. I could be wrong, but, you know, that's an easy, easy find, you know. Uh, so reading on, it says, the seventh verse, Yahweh shall say unto him, it is written again, thou shall not tempt the Lord thy power. Now that's a quote from Deuteronomy the 6th chapter I believe and the 16th verse so that shows you the way you battle Satan you know and Satan can where we read in here Satan this was the actual spiritual demon Satan but Satan can come in many forms and Satan can come through people so when they throw one scripture at you the way you battle is by throwing another scripture at them okay so it comes down to the, the, the battle of the knowledge of the scriptures. And, and clearly you see here, Yahweh Shai's scripture trumped the scripture that Satan pulled out on Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai's scripture trumped his scripture. This is why, um, is it not rightly written, um, rightly dividing the word of truth? And that's exactly what Yahweh Shai did. He, he rightly divided the word of truth in his spiritual battle against Satan. Okay, so let's read it again. Matthew 4 and 7. Yahweh Shai saith unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy power. And that's right. Now, here's the point. Again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world. All the kingdoms of the world. From the point that they were, uh, like I said earlier, from the point where they were at that time, which happens to be what? The Roman kingdom, right? The Roman kingdom from that point till now. Okay, till now. Yahweh Shai saw a vision of all the kingdoms. So using extrapolation, you know Yahweh Shai saw a vision of this kingdom in, in all its wicked splendor. You know, he saw the buildings, he saw the... Uh, the um, he saw the uh, the the lights, you know, the buildings, the lights, the cities, 
All right, the the magnificent uh, and this devil can build, man. One thing you got to say about this devil is he knows how to build. You know, um, all the the monuments that this devil have have built, the 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 magnificent bridges. You know, the infrastructure, if you will, of this kingdom. You how wish I saw it. The lights, like I mentioned earlier, the lights, the cars, you know, technology of, of uh, this kingdom in the last, what, um, beginning in the 19th century to the present, how technology have grown. And that's pursuant to uh, Daniel. I think it's Daniel, the 12th chapter, it says wisdom and knowledge and wisdom and knowledge shall increase. Right. Meaning what? Technology. Oh, he saw the planes. Yahweh Shai saw the planes. He saw the um, uh, he saw the uh, the different uh, spacecraft that Esau has. I'm pretty sure he saw that. He, in other words, he saw all the wicked splendor of Esau. That's what Satan was showing him. Okay. He saw the glory of what makes America great. Everybody wants to come to America, right? You know, like the song back in the 80s. And there's still some truth to it to this very day. The song back in the 80s um, uh, by Neil Diamond, They're Coming to America. Everywhere and around the world, they're coming to America today. You know? So he saw, he saw, this, he saw the glory of America, man. There's no doubt about it. Because America is one of the kingdoms of this world. And you notice, right? All those kingdoms from the time that Satan showed Yahweh Shai that vision till now, all those kingdoms have been ruled by who? All those kingdoms have been ruled under the power and influence of Satan. Okay? <laughs> because when Yahweh Shai establishes his kingdom on the planet Earth, his kingdom is going to be in total righteousness. Yahweh Shai's kingdom, and as pursuant to 2 Peter 3 and 13, Yahweh Shai's kingdom is going to be in total righteousness. Okay, what does it say in Job 9 and 24? The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. We're still in the rule of the wicked right now. We're in the regime, we're in the rule of the wicked. Okay, the wicked is ruling. Who's the wicked? Malachi 1 and 4, Esau, Edom. That's the wicked. Okay, so... Let's read it again, man. Matthew 4 and 8. Again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world. And it was like they were looking at a hologram of, of future kingdoms that were to be set up on the planet Earth. And you better believe America was one of them. Okay? I'm pretty sure you always I saw the beginning of America. All right? And then how America morphed into this great empire that it is. Yeah. So Yahweh I saw that. Show of him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. See? The glory of them. And, and America is a glorious kingdom. There's no doubt about that. But guess what? America is faded. It's a faded glory. America's glory is fading, man. And it's fading fast. Okay? New York alone. I remember... I remember uh, uh, pre-New York, pre-New York before 9-11, um, and now post-New York. Big difference, okay? Pretty much 9-11 uh, pretty much killed the spirit of New York, 9-11. I remember there was, a, a, there was a, new, a news article, I think it was on the, the New York Times, and if anybody finds that, you're, you're good. You're pretty good. <laughs> the, the, the headline said, um, New York has lost its two front teeth. New York has lost its two front teeth. And that's after the, the implosion of the Twin Towers. Because they were imploded, all right? And that ain't no conspiracy theory. That's a conspiracy fact. All right? They were imploded. Both, both buildings were taken down. And the, the caption, I believe it was the next day, the caption in the article, I don't know if it was, I don't remember if it was the Daily News or the New York Times, it said, New York has lost its two front teeth. So what, what's the, what's, 
you know, what is the point? The point is America, New York being one of the capital cities of America. I mean, it's known as the Empire State, right? Uh, New York is nothing like it used to be. So this is all examples of America losing its glory, faded glory, okay? Faded glory. So here we just read, Satan is showing Yahweh all the kingdoms of the world, including America, including New York, and the glory of them. But like I gave you an example, New York, is its glory is fading. So, i.e., America's glory is fading, okay? As it is written, the fashion of this world shall pass away. Now, check out the next verse. It says, And saith unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. So that, that shows you that the power of this kingdom was given to Satan. This is his kingdom. Okay? Then Yahweh Shai saith unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy power, and him only shalt thou serve. So this is the part of the title of the video uh, where it says, He kept his integrity. That's your example right there. Yahweh Shai kept his integrity. Now, let me show you an ex a scripture to uh, um, explain even more the part where it says the glory of them. Okay? This kingdom was so glorious that even John, Apostle John, marveled at the glory of this kingdom. Okay, let's get that scripture. All right, let's get that scripture. Okay, uh, yeah, this is it right here. The book of Revelation. Revelation 17. The point is in the seventh verse, but we're going to go to the uh, fifth verse. Well, let's start at the fourth verse, Revelation 17 and 4. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet colored, scarlet, scarlet color, and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. Now, that's a metaphor for the glory of America, the, the riches, its splendor, its glory. Okay? Of course, when uh, the Apostle John saw it, he saw he actually saw a woman, a beautiful woman. And just like it says here, she was arrayed in purple, scarlet, decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. In other words, she was decked out. But that, even though he saw, he saw a, a woman, that was a metaphor. What he saw was really a metaphor for the gloriness of America, the, splen the, the splendor of America. Having a golden cup in her hand, right? Full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. Yeah, that's America. The, her, her philosophies. All right, like let me give you an example. A transgender. That's an example of the filthiness and abomination of her fornication. Because transgender is against the law. You see the word fornication. What is fornication? That is uh, the breaking of the laws, statutes, and commandments of the Heavenly Father. Transgender is a breaking of the laws, statutes, and commandments of the Heavenly Father. As a matter of fact, the law tells us a man is not even supposed to wear a woman's garment, you know, let alone turn into a woman. So that's just one of your examples. The, the abomination and filthiness of her fornication. What's another example? Homosexuality. Homosexuality is pushed heavy in America. You know, through the actors, through the, the entertainers, the singers, the Hollywood movies, you know. So I gave you two examples of the abomination and filthiness of her fornication. Okay, let's keep reading. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great. So that's America. And the reason why it's a mystery is very few people know this. Very few people know that America is really Babylon the Great in the scriptures. The term Babylon means confusion. 
And that's what America is. America is the land of confusion. I always talk about that song by a, a Genesis. This is the land of confusion. That's America, man. One of the reasons America is the land of confusion is, like I gave you, uh, 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 transgender is one, uh, homosexuality, that's confusion. Transgender, that's confusion. They're trying to bring all nations together as one. That's why America is known as a melting pot. All right, that's confusion. You know, the one guy who tried it, Nimrod, what happened there? All right, the Lord destroyed that idea that Nimrod had of, of uh, bringing all nations together as one. And, and, and there the Lord scattered all the nations by giving them different languages. Hence the term, the Tower of Babel. All right, hence the term Babel, which means confusion. When you're babbling, people don't understand what you're saying. To them, it's confusion. Okay, and that's what the word Babylon means. It means confusion. Mystery, Babylon the Great. In other words, great confusion. And it's a mystery because the majority of people don't know that America is Babylon the Great. The mother of harlots, the mother of harlots, meaning what? Uh, you got America and her philosophies that are enticing other nations. Other nations are trying to be like America. They want to be like America. All right? Because a philosophy is like a woman. All right? A philosophy is like a woman. So you have all these other nations laying down spiritually by taking on America's philosophies, laying down with this harlot. That's why America is known as the mother of harlots. Okay? And abominations of the earth. <laughs> That's self-explanatory, man. You know, if, the, if it's wickedness, top flight wickedness, you better believe America is behind it. Okay? America is behind it. All right, reading on, it says, And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints. What does that mean? Meaning, who are the saints? Israelites. When our people came over here in slavery, when they were brought over here in cargo slave ships. That's an example of this woman, America, being drunken with the blood of the saints. Okay? The, the, the main country that profited from, uh, from uh, the slave trade was America, England and America, okay? Because the top bankers who were behind it, they live, they live over there in England, namely the Rothschild family. But I would say a close second that profited off that slave trade was America. That's one of the things that, you know, you got the saying, make America great again. Trump was saying, we got to make America great again. One of the things that made America great was slavery. <laughs> One of the things that made America great was slavery, the slave trade, the slave ships. Okay? So, again, when, when the scriptures say, and I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints, now you know what that means. Meaning the, the, the slave trade that took place over here. Okay? How the slaves were brought over here. All right? And many of them lost their lives. And when they were brought over here, those that were rebellious, they were killed. They were just, then you had your lynching. You know, you had the lynching of the, of, of the slaves, which were really Israelites, okay? They were the saints. Who were the saints? Psalm 148, uh, the 14th verse, beginning at the 14th verse, tells you who the saints are. The saints are the Israelites, okay? So that's what that means, drunken with the blood of the saints. And guess what? Esau has to pay for that blood, okay? Okay? There's a scripture where it says, See if thou has not hated blood, blood shall pursue thee. That's Ezekiel, the 35th chapter. So Esau got to pay. Read on, it says, With the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Yahweh Shai. So we're, we're approaching that time where many Israelites are going to be put to death for not accepting the MOTB, the CHIP. Okay? They're going to become what? Martyrs. So the Apostle John saw that. Now, here's the point. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. Okay? And it's the same thing when, when uh, Satan was showing Yahushai the vision of this kingdom. I'm pretty sure Yahushai looked at it and he didn't admire it, but he looked in, in awe, you know? I'm pretty sure of that. Okay? Okay? But he, he, the point is, he still kept his integrity. Because you know what? You, 
Look, what did we read here in the 8th verse? It says, when Satan showed him the vision of all the kingdoms of the world, what does the 8th verse say, the latter part? And the glory of them. See? So it's the same thing here. The same thing here with the Apostle John, the island of Patmos. All right? It, remember, it said the glory of them, right? Apostle John admired that glory. Because when we read Revelation 17 and 6, And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Yahweh Shai. And when I saw her, America, in its splendid, wicked glory, I wondered with great admiration. He wondered with great admiration. Okay? And like I said, that woman represents America. That woman was a metaphor for America. Yeah, the woman was beautiful and she was decked out, but she represented America. And it's the same thing we read in Luke, the glory of them, the glory of the kingdoms of the world. And America, of course, you know, America was in there. And then as we read on, it says, And the angel said unto him, unto me, Wherefore didst thou marvel? Yeah, why are, you, why are you marveling? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman <laughs> and of the beast that carried her. The beast is who? The Roman Empire. Because America's patent after the Roman Empire. This is the new Rome, if you will. Okay? So America, uh, the Roman Empire is, the, is this beast. The ideology of the Roman Empire is this beast that's carrying this bitch called America. All right? Even here in uh, America, you have certain structures that's laid out like ancient Rome. Let's go to Washington, D.C. The layout of Washington, D.C. is like ancient Rome. Okay, certain buildings, the White House, if you will, the White House is patent after ancient Rome. So that's your beast that's carrying this woman, this harlot, the mother of harlots. That was so beautiful that Apostle John marveled at her. It was so beautiful that Satan proudly uh, showed the visions of all the kingdoms and proudly showed Yahweh Shai America and the glory of her. We just read it, right, in Luke, the fourth chapter. <laughs> All right, so, uh, and the beast that carried her, which have the seven heads and, and ten horns, right. Going back to, you know, the Roman Empire, the Roman government, which really began with the Greeks, okay? And the Greeks became what? The Greeks became Romans. And, and the Greeks and the Romans were nothing but Edomites. That's all they were, Okay? All right, so, um, so yeah, Yahweh Shai, he, he kept his integrity. Even though Satan showed Yahweh Shai the kingdoms of the world, America being one of them, Yahweh Shai's heart wasn't to this kingdom. Let's prove that. And that, that's, the way, that's the same way we got to be. We got to be for Yahweh Shai's kingdom, not for this kingdom. As, as it is written, the fashion of this world shall pass away. Okay. This is the book of John 14 and 30. Let's read that. So that's a heavy point, man. Yahweh Shai, he saw America. He saw this kingdom in all its splendor, its wicked splendor and glory. And he still wasn't compelled to sell out to Satan. Okay. So we can, we can take that as a, as, as an example. That's an example to us, okay? Yahweh Shai never sold out, so we ain't going to sell out. John 14 and 30. Hereafter, I will not talk. These are the words of Yahweh Shai, by the way. I will not talk much with you, for the prince of this world cometh. Who's the prince of this world? Satan. All right? He's the one in charge right now. And the reason why he's in charge is because the Heavenly Father have given him that power. All power comes from the Heavenly Father, whether it be good or evil. All right, Isaiah the forty-fifth chapter tells us that the heavenly Father said, "I create, uh, I create peace and I create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things." So the reason why Satan is in power is because the heavenly Father gave him that power. And Esau, the Edomites, they're the children, the physical children, the physical children of Satan, of the spiritual demon Satan. Esau, Edom is his physical children. They're the wicked. 
And the reason why they're the wicked is because they were created to be the wicked by the Heavenly Father. Okay, Malachi, the first chapter, the fourth verse. So they're the prince of this world. Right now, the prince of this world could be called the Rothschild family, the top banking families. Okay, they're the prince of this world right now. That's why they have everything. So again, John 14 and 30. Hereafter, I will not talk much with you for the prince of this world cometh and have nothing in me. Right, because Yahweh Shai represents righteousness. Satan represents wickedness. You know, righteousness cannot mix with wickedness. It's like oil and water. They don't mix. Okay, so that's another example showing us that Yahweh Shai really didn't care. Even though Satan was trying to tempt him, that's what Luke, the fourth chapter is all about. The, the temptation of Satan, which all of us are going through that. We're all enduring the temptation of Satan, right? And the same way Yahweh Shai defeated Satan, he, he overcame Satan. The same way, that's our job. We're, the same way we're supposed to overcome Satan. No matter how glorious the kingdom looks. <laughs> you know, Yahweh Shai saw the splendor of this kingdom, the glory of this kingdom, and he rejected it. So is that not an example for us? <laughs> Damn right. Yahweh Shai saw the glory of America, man. He saw all the buildings. He saw the skyscrapers. He saw the bright lights. The bright lights of the city, the cities, the power of them, the toys, you know, the cars. and the, Yahweh Shai saw all of that stuff, man. And he still was not compelled to give up his integrity. That's the, that's the nature of this video, man. And I hope through this power and spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yahshai is edifying for you brothers as well as you sisters uh, hereafter I will not talk much with you for the prince of this world cometh and have nothing in me okay so that was John uh, 14 and 30 let's go to John 12 and 31 let's see what that says so I put together a few scriptures you know to hopefully enhance this lesson uh, this is the book of John 12 and um, 31. It says, now is the judgment of this world. So the judgment of this world is is happening even now as I speak, because Yahweh Barshim Yahshua have raised up the prophets to condemn this world, to condemn this kingdom. That's pursuant to Jeremiah 28 and 9. All right. Jeremiah 28 and 9, which says, the Heavenly Father always sends his prophets before he destroys a kingdom. And all these kingdoms that Satan showed Yahweh Shai, all those kingdoms were wicked. They were all patterned after wickedness. Even the uh, Byzantine Empire, I'm sure Yahweh Shai saw that. That was a kingdom, Byzantium. But it was really patterned after wickedness. Okay? And the last kingdom, which is this kingdom, is patterned after what? Come on, wickedness. That's why all these kingdoms, they got to be destroyed, man. And that goes back to that vision that uh, Nebuchadnezzar saw, saw with the image, with the fine head of gold and the feet of uh, iron and clay. And he also saw a stone come out the heavens and hit the image at its feet and crumble the whole image. That's all the kingdoms of this world. Being crumbled by who? By Yahweh Shai, which is the stone. That's the understanding of the vision that Nebuchadnezzar saw. Okay? So again, John 12 and 31, now is the judgment of this world. So this world is entering into judgment. First, the Lord raises up his prophets to pronounce that judgment. All right? And then the Heavenly Father brings it into fruition, makes it happen. What's the judgment of America? Total destruction, man. By, by thermonuclear missiles and the chariots of the Lord. So it's going to be a combined element of destruction, combined elements of destruction. The nuclear missiles and the chariots of the Lord, both bringing destruction. And at the same time, the chariots of the Lord are going to deliver the Lord's elect. That's pursuant to Matthew 24 and 30. Okay? So it says, Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. So this is where we're heading. This is what we're patiently waiting for. And we don't have much long to wait. Very soon, Yahweh Shai's kingdom is going to be instituted in the planet Earth. Okay? 
And do you know Yahweh Shai knew that? He knew that his kingdom eventually would be instituted in the planet Earth. And that's one of the reasons why he didn't sell out to Satan. Let's read it. Let's go to the book of uh, Hebrews 12 and 2. Let's read that. Hebrews 12 and 2. It says this. Well, let me start the first verse. This is pretty good stuff here. It says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. And who are those witnesses? The word witness means to know. All right. When we read about the stories of the prophets, you know, what they went through, how they dealt with adversity. Those are our witnesses. So we got a great number of witnesses. You know, the, the, the stories of uh, that builds our faith. You know, the encounters and how they dealt with them. It builds our faith, right? Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. And that's exactly what we're doing in this knowledge, in this truth. We're running this, we're running in this knowledge and this truth with patience. The word patience means to suffer. Right? Now, the second verse says, Looking unto Yahweh Shai, the author and finisher of our faith. Here's the point. Who for the joy that was set before him, what was the joy that was set before him? Him, it, uh, him receiving a kingdom from his father, Yahweh, which, which, we're waiting for him to patiently receive. And remember the scripture have told us in Romans the 8th chapter that we're going to be joint heirs with Yahweh Shai. So Yahweh Shai is the top heir. What's an heir? An heir is a person that's set to inherit something. So pursuant to Psalms the 2nd chapter, Yahweh Shai is getting ready to inherit this earth in righteousness. That's his inheritance. Now us being joint heirs with Yahweh Shai, we're going to inherit the same thing, beginning with the elect. So again it says, who for the joy that was set before him, and he knew that. That's why when Satan was trying to tempt him, he said, man, he said, in his mind, he, that is, he said, man, I'm going to receive a greater joy than this. I'm going to receive a greater glory than this. So no, that's okay, Satan. No, thank you. And he, he, he uh, cut Satan by saying, look, it's written, you only worship the heavenly father. Him only do you worship. That was his reply to Satan to Satan, showing him the vision of the glory of, of the kingdoms, America being one of them. So here it says, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. Yeah, and he, he endured the cross. He damn sure did, man. He dealt with it like a champ, okay? And we can read about that in the Gospels. Again, it's written, uh, uh, whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for what? For our learning. That we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. That's why the account of Yahweh Shai enduring the cross is in the Gospels. It's in there to help us with our faith. To help boost our faith. Also to show the integrity of this man, Yahweh Shai. The, the faith of this man, the integrity of this man, the belief of this man, the goodness of this man. I mean... <laughs> It's so much that it teaches us, you know. Yahweh Shai endured the cross. All that pain for, what was it, a three-hour window of pain, excruciating pain, you know. So the point is he saw the glory he was about to receive. And that shows you right there, you got to be a visionary in this truth. Again, it is written, where there is no vision, the people perisheth. Yahweh Shai had the inner vision to see the future where he would be sitting on his throne and inheriting the earth, inheriting the earth as his kingdom. Okay? See, I always like to say the kingdom of Israel is really the kingdom of Yahweh Shai, because essentially that's what it is. It's going to be the kingdom of Yahweh Shai, which by default is the kingdom of Israel. Yahweh Shai being the top Hebrew Israelite, right? That the joy was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame and we re we read about the shame how Yahweh Shai was mocked he was made fun of by the high priests how they put uh, a purple robe on him and 
They made a crown of thorns and they placed it on his head, you know, and they were, they were slapping him and, you know, and they were making uh, snide remarks like prophesy unto us who slapped you, you know, making mockery of the man. And guess what? All those spirits are back today, man. And they're going to receive their, they're, they're going to receive their just, just reward for their wickedness that they did more than 2000 years ago. Okay, so it says despising the shame and is set down at the right hand of the of the throne of the heavenly father. There you go. And and uh, how shall I receive that when he went back to the heavens? All right. When he went back to the heavens, he received that that uh, position. Now we're waiting for him to come on the planet Earth and claim the Earth. As his kingdom. Okay. Uh, let's go to the book of John, John 18 and 36. John 18 and 36. Oh, yeah, this is some good stuff here. John 18 and 33. It says, Then Pilate entered into the judgment hall again, and called Yahweh and said unto him, Art thou the king of the Jews? Yahweh answered, him says says thou this thing of thyself or did others tell it of thee so yahweh was very pompous with uh, pontius pilate all right because he knew in his mind pilate was a nobody okay and he he understood he had to endure like it says despising the shame endured the cross that's all part of the cross the word cross means burden those individuals were being a burden to yahweh okay Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Thine own nation and the chief priests have delivered thee unto me. What hast thou done? Yahusha answered, Now listen carefully. Yahusha answered, My kingdom is not of this world. See? So here's Satan taking him on a high mountain and showing him all the kingdoms of the world. Now you know why he re flat, flat out rejected them. Because those kingdoms are not his kingdom. That's Satan's kingdom. His kingdom is, is, is for to come. And his kingdom is going to be far greater than Satan's kingdom ever was. Okay? Yahweh answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, right, then would my servants fight. So really, we're not supposed to give a, a damn about this world, man. Like the Apostle Paul wisely put it, uh, using this world, but not abusing it. Because we live in this world, right? We do what we have to do in this world to survive. So the main reason, so we can survive, so we can do this work. At this point, that's the way I see it. You know, we do what we got to do in this world just to survive. Well, like the song says, just to get by. So we can do this work. You know, so we pay our bills. We get a place to stay. We get food now our bellies, clothes on our back, just so we can do this work. Because anything outside of doing this work is, is, is not worth anything. I mean, come on. What, what is there in this world, what is there in this world that is uh, uh, more better than doing this work? That is more profitable spiritually than doing this work? Nothing. Okay? You know, now it's coming out. You got... This morning I saw a video where you had one of these rappers, one, a rapper from Chicago, and he wasn't getting his record deal or rap deal or whatever. Now he's coming out and exposing the industry. He said, since you guys don't want to give me, uh, uh, you don't want to blow me up, so to speak, I'm going to expose the industry. That's what he said. And, he, and then he said the majority of the rappers... The majority of the uh, top rappers that you see, they're all homosexuals. They're all, they're, they've all been effed in the ass. You know what I mean by effed? Yeah, he came out and straight up said it. So that's what it takes. That's the secret to success in the so-called world. Like you, you got the saying, secret to my success. The secret to their success, the people that are on top, your top, I don't care what genre of uh, entertainment, whether it be 
musician or actor or whatever. The secret to uh, their so-called success is, is doing deplorable things. Selling their soul, as it were. Which means they do things that are against, that are against you know, humanity. That are against the laws and statutes and commandments of the Heavenly Father. Okay? That's what it means to sell, sell your soul. So that's what all these top actors, top rappers, top singers... They're all deplorable, man. They're all agents of Satan. And they're all, they all have done deplorable things to get where they are. And that's what this dude said. Okay, this, this up and, the, well, he was trying to be an up and coming rapper and he, he wouldn't get his deal. So he became sour. And many of these individuals in that industry are becoming sour because they're, they're finding out that they sold their soul for really next to nothing. Oh yeah, another thing the, the, the rapper dude said, he said, um, he said, uh, many of these rappers you see, they're not even rich. That's just an illusion. And we've always known that. You know, when you watch the videos, they first of all, they spend a gigantic sum of money to make a music video. They don't tell you that. They're not getting that shit for free. And then in the music video, they, they show you, they show themselves, of course, they, if you're going to spend all that money to make a music video, you're going to hype it. You're gonna hype that 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 uh, music video. You're gonna hype it to the to what the tenth power. You're gonna come out there glossing and flossing. You're gonna show yourself living in a goddamn mansion. You know, with chicks all over the place. Man, that's all an illusion. Like the rapper dude was saying, you said many many of them are not even rich like that. You know, the ones who's making the most money of that rap nonsense is the so-called Jew. OK, the so-called Jews are making the most money. Yes, rap is the top genre in music. No doubt about that. You can't dispute it. But the bigger question is this. Who's making all the money? Ain't the artists. The artists are not making all the money. All right. The record labels are making all the money. And those record labels are owned by who? By the, by the small hatters, the 1948ers, the so-called Jews. So what's the point? The point is, this whole world is an illusion, man. Now, what we got in this truth is real. Okay? What Yahweh Shai got is real. The glory that Yahweh Shai got, that's real glory. And that's glory that's going to last for an eternity. Not a period of time like in this kingdom. You get glory in this kingdom, that only lasts for a period of time. I remember when uh, Prince and Michael Jackson, both of them were like gods. I remember that. I'm old enough to remember that. They were like gods. Where are they now? Yeah, they're talked about, but they don't have half the glory that they had when they were alive and on top. All right? During the, the late 70s going into the early 80s, that was their time. That was their moment. It came and it went. Such is the so-called glory of this kingdom. There you go. Okay? It don't last. Now, the glory that we're going to get, that's going to last for an eternity, forever and ever and ever, uh, so let it be, okay? Amon in the Hebrew, so let it be, all right? So, John 18 and 36 again, Yahweh Shai answered, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight, that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from hence. So Yahweh Shai always had his eyes on his kingdom. The kingdom that he was going to get from his father. And that's pursuant to Psalm, the second chapter. Matter of fact, I keep mentioning it. Let's get it. Because it, it says everything concerning the great kingdom that Yahweh Shai is going to get. And guess what? We're going to be a part of that kingdom. Because as it is written, the Apostle Paul said it best. We're going to be joint ears with Yahweh Shai. All right. Uh, this is the book of uh, Psalm 2 and 4. He that sitteth in the heaven shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in derision. Yeah, because Esau and the other nations, they're trying to stretch their kingdom, trying to create something called an, a one world order, a one world government. Now, they're only going to get so far with that madness until Yahweh Shai comes out just like the stone Nebuchadnezzar saw coming out the heavens, crashing that image. 
until Yahushak comes out the heavens with those angels and those chariots and destroy the dreams and hopes and aspirations of the so-called white man Esau and the other nations in their so-called new world order. Okay? New world order. Yahushua is going to destroy that. Yahushua and the angels. And then after the destruction, Yahushua is going to set up his kingdom on the planet Earth. How beautiful is that, man? And his kingdom is going to be in total righteousness. That's 2 Peter 3 and 13. The earth in his in Yahushua's kingdom, the earth is going to be pristine. You can't say that for this kingdom. The, in in, in uh, Esau's kingdom, the scriptures tell us in Isaiah, the earth languisheth, you know, is brought to desolation. You know, the trees look dead. You got something called deforestation in Esau's kingdom. He's cutting down the trees like a madman. So much so that deforestation has become a major problem. Google the term deforestation. And let's talk about the foods in Esau's kingdom. How much or how many of those foods are really foods? Huh? You got something called GMO, genetically modified organism. Okay? Many of the so-called food that you see is not even real food, man. The bread is not even real. The meat is not even real. They're filled with chemicals that causes <laughs> that causes death at an alarming rate. I mean, there's so many problems wrong with this man's glory, this man's kingdom, that it's got to go, okay? It's got to go. And that's what's going to happen when Yahweh Shai comes with those angels. Then shall he speak unto them in his wrath and vex them in his sore displeasure. Yeah, because the Heavenly Father doesn't want no one world government. Nimrod tried it and he failed. So what makes Esau think he's going to succeed where Nimrod failed? There's only going to be one nation ruling. And that's the nation of Israel, the Lord's chosen people, beginning with the elect. And all the other nations are going to be slaves to the nation of Israel. Then shall he speak unto them in his wrath and vex them in his sore displeasure. Here it is right here. Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. I will declare the decree the Lord hath said unto me, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Now here's the point. Ask of me and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance. That's all the other nations. They're going, to be our, uh, they're going to be our inheritance. So this is really uh, directed to Yahweh Shai first. And then the elect. Okay. The elect of Yahweh Shai. The ones that he's going to cho choose. When he comes back to destroy this society. Ask of me and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance. The uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Remember what he said. My kingdom is not of this world. So this is what he's going to receive in his kingdom. Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. There you go. So that's what Yahweh Shai is set to inherit. And not just Yahweh Shai. You know, the, all of us Israelites beginning with the elect. We're set to inherit because we're going to be heirs with Yahweh Shai. And finally, in the book of John 16 and 33, let's get that. Once again, I hope you were edified by this video. I hope that it boosts your knowledge as well as your faith, as well as your spirit. If it did, please let me know in the comment section. Please let me know you were edified. Be honest. If you wasn't edified, you know, I'm not looking for empty vanity and praise, all right? I'm looking for individuals that were really, truly were edified. They followed the lesson. They got the points that I made. And their knowledge was built off of it. And their faith was enhanced off of it. That's what I'm looking for. So let me know in the comment section. If, if you know, if that, if you uh, were edified. Okay. Uh, John 16 and 33. It says this. These things I have spoken unto you. That in me ye might have peace. Now that's the Irish I speaking to us, right? That, there it is. The only time we really have peace in this in this piece of shit kingdom, if you if you can even call it that, 
is if we're dealing with this truth, if we're hooked into Yahweh Shai, if we're teaching about the gospel of Yahweh Shai, that's the only time we really have peace. Our mind is at peace. Outside of that, our mind is like a, a rolling sea, man. Okay? No, com no uh, real comfort, you know? These things I have spoken unto you that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation. That's right. Uh, another thing too, the reason being is, like Yahweh Shai said, I, I believe it's in the next chapter, when he was praying to his father, Yahweh, he said, they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. The same world that Satan showed him, the, the, the kingdoms in the moment of time, that world. Okay? The world of the wicked. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. We're not of this world. That's why we really can't fit in this world. Because we're, we're, our spirits are totally different. We're desiring to be righteous. We were created to be righteous. This world was created to be wicked. Again, oil and water. It doesn't mix. All right? So, he's, Yahweh Shai said, Ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. And yes, he has. All, oh, yeah. Absolutely. He overcome the world. He overcame the temptation that was given to him by Satan. When Satan showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time, he overcame that temptation. And like I said, one of those kingdoms was America, the, the splendidness of America, the glory of America, which many people desire to come to. Man, Yahweh Shai just thumbed that off, man. Yahweh Shai said, yeah, that's all right. I got a better kingdom coming. And that's the same way we feel. Okay? We got a better kingdom coming, brothers. <laughs> Phone at the jam on that one. We got a better kingdom coming, brothers. So let's all hang in there, show faith and integrity, and wait for it. As it is written, wait ye upon me till I rise up to the prey. And and Yahabashim Yahshai is rising up to the prey. This man, his glory is going down. I talked about that earlier. America and its faded glory. This world and its faded glory. Everybody, well, not everybody, but a lot of people are ready for a big change, man. They're ready for a big change. Okay? All right, that being said, hopefully you were edified. On to the next one.